How all right, you so your first question. Was this the most trustful of all the films you have done yet? Yes. Definitely? That's absolutely, without a doubt. Um, <clears throat> because it's, it's very difficult to make a long film. Very difficult, as you probably know. And it's not even, once you're done filming, you, it feels kind of like all the stress is relieved, but it's actually just getting started. And then you have to go and edit it, and that's almost even worse than the other process, because you have to kind of just stand there and just watch editing happen and make sure and then you have to go back and watch it over and over and over and over until it's perfect and it takes a really long time and to add to that point when you have to make a feature film and every actor involved has to leave three hours before they're supposed to and you have to do everything out of order it is difficult I'll get into that later alright this next question asked by Super White Lightning 8 uh, what basically inspired the storyline? Um, okay well we knew we wanted to because we made the truth last year uh, and it came out October 1st, so this year we wanted to, you know, step it up again and we wanted to do another feature film. So, what we did was we decided we would just get together into, in our thinking chamber, which is Giancarlo's basement. Um, that's actually, it's actually almost impossible to think of ideas unless we're in Giancarlo's basement. So we came down here with Giancarlo and it was me, Giancarlo, Matthew, and Abby, and we had no idea what we wanted to do. We just knew that we wanted to make a feature film, we wanted to make it really well, and we wanted to, like, top the other one we did. And, um... And basically, this is what happened. I'll, I'll reenact the scene for you. Oh my god, Nick. Wait, actually, Giancarlo was in the washroom. I was just sitting on the thing. This is what I hear through the door. Nick, I got it! I got it, Nick! What? Oh my god, what if there's this... Okay, okay, let me, let me pitch it to you. Let me pitch it to you. There's this guy, right? And he wakes up, and then he goes to his door, he opens it, and then he wakes up again. And then we freaking spazzed out and we built the whole story around that idea. And that's how we came up with it. So we came, basically that's how we make up our films. We, we come up with a cool concept or a really cool idea we like. And then we build a story around it to make it cohesive and make it, you know, work. yeah, make it work. Uh, this question asked by Rodolfi Films, basically, did Vince win or lose? Well, um, I've been saying this in all the comments, but the end is open to interpretation. So you guys can think whatever you want. There's really not a right way to end it. But the way the story was written was that in the end, what happens is actually Vincent ends up putting the duplicate back in the case. And when Giancarlo opens it, it appears that it was all just one, like one big nightmare, like Marcel says, or like uh, Jesse says in the interrogation room, where he says, by the time we're done with you, it'll all just be one big nightmare. So it seems that way. But in reality, it's actually it actually wasn't. It may appear like that to... Um, to Giancarlo's character Blake, but it actually isn't the case, and it's supposed to be, yeah, and it, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, Vincent, in, in this case, Vincent did win. Uh, this question asked by Game Guy, how did it feel after rendering the final project? Oh man, did it feel good. But I actually was more nervous than I was before, because I knew that if there was a, like a screw up in it, we can't fix it now, <laughs> because it took like, oh, uploading that, that to YouTube, that file, took like how many hours? Eight hours, wasn't it? Six. six hours. Yeah. Six hours it took to upload that file to YouTube, which is insane. Um, so yeah, we knew that. What like after it was obviously I felt great. It was a huge load off, but there was still a little bit of nerves. I was still nervous for you guys, for your reaction and stuff. So hope hopefully it was good. Yeah. So this ask this uh, question asked by PQP Productions. Uh, were you inspired by watching any other particular movies to get to to get sh certain shots and a particular feel for the film, or was it just basically uh, your own motive? Um, well, actually, we didn't really have an idea. Like a lot of people are, relate the film to Groundhog Day, but we actually did not get the idea from Groundhog Day. Not the idea for the film, the no, idea no. for some of your shots. Oh, well, <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, not really, to be honest. I we got I got the I like the feel of the film, like how I wanted it to feel and come off, like the atmosphere of it, from a bunch of like darker movies. You know, I wanted to be dark. I didn't want it to be like happy and joyful. I wanted it to be like a you know a dark, a dramatic film. So when I went like a b bunch of films, I don't remember which ones, but. There were a few, like, In Time. Have you seen In Time? Anyone seen In Time with Justin Timberlake or whatever? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, that one there, I was like, that's kind of cool. Yeah. It was a cool idea, right? And then, also, things like Total Recall. Yeah. Um, some of the shots. That movie, some, not even some of the shots, just the way it looked. Like, the way how it was, yeah. like, really, you know, really dark and gloomy. That's kind of what we wanted to go off for. As for the shots, I knew we wanted to be creative and take some really long shots in the film. I don't really know if that was inspired by anything in particular. Was there a movie that was inspired by that? I don't think so. I think that was just us wanting to get done. Yeah, get creative. No, it wasn't even that. Because our shots are pretty creative. creative. Yeah. 
like, and it took a long time. Like, it looks, I, I, there's, I think, what, like, four of them? Yeah, there's, there's that. The, my, my most favorite, my personal favorite one is the one in the Marty scene where they come up the stairs and then they run into the kitchen. And that, that whole sequence, you might not have noticed, you might not have taken note, but it's all actually one take. And it's pretty long. It took a while to uh, put that one together, yeah. But, uh, yeah, those are, that's basically the answer to that one. The next question, um, what was your favorite scene to film? Uh, I think we just answered that. Yeah, I think, the, actually, you know what? No, it wasn't my favorite scene to film. Because me and Jacarla got into a huge fight that day. Yeah. Yeah, we almost killed each other that day. Um, we'll get on to that later. Yeah, we'll get to that later. Um, but I wasn't my favorite day to film. Actually, my favorite day to film, definitely not any of the beginning scenes at all, for sure. Because that, that got stressful. We have to do the same thing like five times, which is kind of ridiculous. But um, I think the interrogation scene was probably my favorite. Especially the fight with Marcel. In the scorching heat? In the scorching heat, yeah. That was probably my favorite, just to see how it came out. It was really good. I liked it. Uh, actually, you know what? If I had to do that again, I would make a few changes to the way I filmed the fight. But, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, did you feel like the final product is exactly how you wanted it to look? Or did you, what, 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 what about the final product would you have changed? Um, it is pretty close to exactly how I wanted it to be. But you know what, that idea of how you want it to be, I think, changes as you go on through the process. Because at the beginning you have an idea of it, but then as you think through it, you kind of get better ideas explain, along the way. Explain how your idea changed from the beginning to the end. Like, for instance, at the beginning, I, when I was writing the script, I was envisioning where everything would take place, and I had particular ideas in mind. Um, like, for instance, the Marty scene was actually not supposed to play, in my mind, it was not supposed to take place at that house. It was actually supposed to take place at John Paul's house. That was how I wrote it, and I wrote it to fit that kind of scene because I knew that it would work best in that situation. Mm -hmm. But then, when we couldn't get that location for the day, we had to kind of think outside the box, which is goes along with an, another question of how we, you know, how we got into trouble with so many things. But, um, yeah, it definitely changed. Then once I realized where we were there, and we were starting to get the ideas of it and stuff, it really did uh, kind of change. And I was like, wow, this actually could work a lot better than the way I originally planned it. So you have to be open to that kind of, you know, interpretation of things so that you can get something that's different and something that you want. And trust me, your ideas will change throughout the whole the whole way through. Can you name off the top of your head three struggles, three difficulties that you had during the film? Okay. Um, first one is in the scene with uh, when we the one where it was actually the last scene we ever filmed for the morning of. That was the one where I yelled, "That's a wrap." That was the ninth scene. I think it was the seventh day when Marcel and Jonathan came down and there was a fight with Johnny upstairs. And I was very happy with the wicked way it came out with. But the fact that Marcel had to leave early and then everything just kind of was like falling apart around me. So I had to, I had to film everything out of order that I would normally film it just to make sure that Marcel's parts were done before he had to leave. And um, that was hard. Also, difficulties with Giancarlo, me and Giancarlo butt heads a lot when we think of ideas and stuff. So, like for instance, at the Marty scene, oh man, that was brutal. We, we really went at it there. Um, that was another problem, and another complication, I think, would probably be... Oh, man, how could I forget this one? When the, it was one of the first times we ever wanted to film something. It was the scene where um, you see Bru uh, Andrew Bruno and Marcel come in for the very first time as Jesse and Vincent, and you've, you know, they, that's where their characters are introduced. And originally, we were, we were we filmed, that was one of the first scenes we were going to film. And Marcel couldn't come that day because he had a problem with family or something like that. So we, out of, like, I don't know what we were thinking when we did that. Pure yeah, pure desperation. desperation. We decided to replace Marcel's character with Johnny's character just for that day. And then work that into the script and then commingle everything together and make it better. So we actually finished filming the whole scene with Johnny in place of Marcel's character. It was still Johnny's character, but we would we were like fill in the, in the thing with like the fact that like Marcel, yeah, some stupid idea. And we ended up having to refilm that, which it was, was a waste of film. yeah, it was basically just a waste of time. We had to, that was a reshoot, which we had to do, but I'm really glad we did it because it came out a lot better the second time. That's for sure. Yeah, we learned. What about the eight month eight month process of the movie? Would you change? Not like the specifics that we talked about throughout the interview, but what exactly would you change about this long process? If you had to be more organized, or what would you do? If you had the time. If I had the time to, I would make a proper shot list for myself, so that coming into every uh, every shoot day, I would, I would have a, like a set idea of every single shot I would need so that I wouldn't have to stress out about it at the place. I would 
kind of, yeah, I would organize myself a bit better in the pre-production area. I would actually go through the script. We just didn't have time to do that. I would have also liked to review the script a few times and make a few more changes to it, just with lines and stuff. And definitely, I think, part of the editing we would change if we had more time, I think. We would do a lot of things differently. But uh, yeah, like the most of the production stuff was relatively, like the stuff you really couldn't change was just like the complications we had with actors not being able to stay for the full time and all that stuff. Next question from Wolfgate Productions 1. Before you began the film, did you ever have any prior knowledge of the story structure? I know most do, but have you learned a lot from reading screen, screen, screenwriting books? Uh, never read a screenwriting book, although I did um, go on YouTube and look up a bunch of screenwriting tutorials to make sure I was doing it right. Um, a great thing is that Celtics ha like, or that, I don't know how you can pronounce that, that free screenwriting software, which is what we wrote the script on, has already all the formatting done, so you don't really look, need to look up how to do the formatting. I just kind of looked up basic stuff like how the, the story structure, like Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, all that kind of stuff. So I do have a basic knowledge of it, but like they say in a lot of the tutorials, you don't have to like really stick to that, like the first 30 pages are supposed to be Act 1, and then the next 60 are supposed to be Act 2, and then the next 30 are supposed to be Act 3. Like you don't really have to stick to that, you can kind of break the mold a little bit as long as you kind of follow along. But prior to it, I didn't have as much as I do now, I definitely looked up more because I, I'm not going to say too much, but I'm writing something else. And I wanted to make sure I knew every little bit of it, so, yeah. But back then, I, I did have basic idea, just not full idea of it. As a director, what is your approach to directing actors? Do you rehearse at all? And if so, how long? Um, also from Wolfgate Productions. Right? For directing actors, well, we don't really have time to rehearse because we're like independent, like the most independent, like it's literally zero dollar budget for this film. The only thing we spent money on is pizza. But, um... For directing actors, you know, you have to try and kind of find the, the middle ground between being strict and trying to get everything done, but then being a happy guy so that everyone, you know, is, enjoys the time. And sometimes it's extremely difficult because, you know, when there's like six people on set screwing around, it's hard to um, get everyone to do it. You're only one guy, right? And you have to kind of order around six different people. Move the lights here, Giancarlo stand here, I need to frame up this shot, blah, 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 blah all that stuff and you're doing it all at once, it's pretty pretty stressful and people don't realize how stressful it is. Um, so you will see me several times get pretty pissed off in the, in the movie, but I actually did try pretty hard to try and maintain composure and be... And you were right Yeah, and then I tried to, yeah, be, you know, a happy middle ground, but yeah. Here's a question from several effects. How do you schedule your shooting in a way that everyone you need is available? <laughs> That's a funny Very question. careful. <laughs> um, okay. Well, this was originally the plan. Let me just tell you uh, the original plan. Yeah. We actually made a shooting schedule. We made one. We made one. We uh, were organized as hell, man. We were so ready to go. We were so organized. We had dates. And yeah, we had days. Like we were gonna film different things on. Like we made a legit schedule. Um, and what we did to make that was we would check what days people work, and we would check when people are free ahead of time. We would ask them and all that, and we asked every single actor we would need for that day, and we would write it down. And for the, for the first month of the film, that worked beautifully. It was great. Then, when everyone started coming back from summer school and we had to start, we had to start filming the scenes with more people in it, it did not work very well. Um, for the summer portions, it was okay, because if we couldn't film one day, we kind of just shifted it over to the next. But then when school started, it kind of got, became a little hectic. We had to film a few more scenes left, and it wasn't really all that easy. So what you have to try and do if you want to schedule all the actors you need is ask ahead of like way ahead of time if they're free and tell them to book that day off and if you do work make sure you tell your tell them like I'm busy that day don't book me for work then and just make sure you have a, ahead of time like three weeks ahead of time before you're gonna shoot exactly what you want to do and know exactly what you're gonna do on that day so that you don't have to finish half of it on another day because you didn't get, get enough time yeah so what are your tactics on set once everybody's there to consider let's say how, how much time would you say you roughly had to film Scene. On an average scene, we probably had about three, three hours. Three, three to four hours. Three to four hours to film probably five minutes of a scene each right. time. So how, how are your tactics, can, can you tell everybody else, how are your tactics as a director to, to, to finish what you need to get in Because okay. you're basically the main guy that's got to get all Yeah, that. exactly. How do you find the way to fit it all in that three to four hour span? Okay, well, for the interrogation scene, which as you 
whoever's watched the movie, it was very, it was a very long scene. It was like 14 minutes, something like that. And for that scene, um, we actually split that up and filmed that whole scene four different days. Um, but for the main days where Andrew and Marcel were talking to him, we did that all in one day, and I knew we were we only had four hours to film that, and I knew it was going to be a very difficult time. So what I did there was I planned out every single shot I needed, and I followed that very closely to try and get every single shot I need. Um, but otherwise, my tactics uh, for making sure everything gets done, if someone can't stay the whole time, film out of order and make sure they finish what they need to film um, at that time. And that's only a last resort. Um, if they have to leave early and you have to rush it, don't rush the film. Reschedule it for another day if you have the time. We didn't have the time, so I have to think you know, outside the box and do all of like all of Marcel's lines all at once. Um, like when Marcel, one day Johnny couldn't stay for long and then the other day Marcel couldn't stay and he, they, they were only there for like, I think we only had 40 minutes one day. So I had to do all of Jonathan's stuff. Actually, that was in the interrogation scene. Uh, the Jonathan fight in the interrogation scene, we filmed that way before uh, everything else happened between Bruno and Marcel in order to get that finished on time. And also with Marcel when he was here when they all came down and they all started the fight and stuff. We had to film that very quickly to get Marcel out of the way. And then once Marcel's gone, we kind of took a bit more of our time to make sure everything was done correctly. But also when you're doing that, like don't, you need to try and get as much coverage as you can with regards to like shot, different shots and different angles and stuff. I tried to give Matthew the easiest chance, like the best way, to, as many clips as he needs to um, edit the, the film together like well. So I try to do at least three different shots of a different scene. Um, but if it's not necessary, don't do it if you have to do other stuff. Only do that if you have the time to and kind of work you know, all together in one thing and think about what you're doing to make sure you have enough time to finish everything you need to. One last question. Um, this is from the Phantom Fanatic. Okay. Uh, how do you know your script is any good before you even start shooting? Show it to a lot of people. Um, well, when you finish, first of all, I guarantee you when you finish the first time, it sucks. Your script sucks the first time. Everyone's script sucks. Our script sucked. The morning of, you know how many holes there were in the story in the first, the first draft we had? Some yeah, there probably still are some holes, but we're not going to... Uh, you can figure that out post and seven. Um, yeah, but, know that. yeah. Watch the movie. Yeah. yeah. Watch the movie, I'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> but like the first time, like there man then we would read it over and then we would actually me and Giancarlo would sit down and we would think about it and we like Giancarlo would just ask me questions and then I wouldn't have an answer. I'm <laughs> like, okay, we gotta rewrite it now. So we would fix everything, add certain things into certain lines. And the thing about writing a script is don't a big thing is exposition which is when you basically have the actor say exactly what's happening which is something i would have liked to change about the interrogation scene we kind of had the actors just explain the storyline when it really, really shouldn't be that way um what you need to do when you're writing a script is you shouldn't have them talk and ex explain directly to the audience what's going on it should be kind of implied and I, if i could rewrite the script i would if i had enough time to i would rewrite it change those lines to make them a little bit better um, some of them were a little long and stuff like that. I didn't really like that that component of the scene very much, but um, Yeah, when you're writing a script you have to really just show a lot of people like yeah So I showed it to my mom and she read a bit of it. Uh, Dr. Carl showed his mom She read a little bit and they would just basically criticize points of the story that they liked and didn't like and we would fix them and Once we fixed it about four or five times and we had something that we liked we decided that we would go into it and all that and but then also on set like Improv is kind of important. I mean, you gotta let the actors have creative ability. Continue. And that, that's about it. Is that it? Yeah, that went pretty well. Alright. Alright. That's it for me. I love the morning of. That, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. That's a sandwich. That's a sandwich.